The information in this module is accurate and complete to the best of our knowledge. All recommendations are made without guarantee on the part of the author or the sponsoring institutions. The author and the sponsoring institutions disclaim any liability in connection with the use of this information. The optimal alignment of two sequences is one that best exhibits the similarities between them. The sense of similarity may change, however, according to the characteristics of the sequence to be aligned or the type of similarity sought. In order to get an optimal alignment with the appropriate type similarity, the search is divided into three basic types of alignment problems, which will be briefly reviewed in this presentation. State formally the definition of each of the different types of alignment problems. Explain the motivations that lead to these differences. Distinguish by simple inspection the type of a given alignment. There are three basic types of pairwise sequence similarities whose search is cast as the solution of three different pairwise sequence alignment problems. These are the global alignment problem, the semi-global alignment problem, and the local alignment problem. These problems apply both to DNA and protein sequences. A solution to either one of these problems is an alignment that achieves maximum score with respect to a previously chosen scoring scheme and under the conditions of the type of problem. Next is the definition of each of these problems. But before defining global, semi-global, and local alignment problem, let's fix the DNA alignment scoring scheme that we will use in all the illustrations in this module. The scoring matrix rewards a match with four points in the score and penalizes a mismatch taking one point from the score, as defined by the scoring matrix. In turn, each gap insertion is penalized by taking one point from the score as well. This is the base pairwise sequence alignment problem. It has no particular conditions. It simply compares two given input sequences, X and Y, from end to end, and return an alignment with maximum score. All illustrations in this presentation use DNA sequences and the scoring scheme proposed here. That is, each match is rewarded with four points, and each mismatch or insertion of a gap is penalized with minus one points. The actual computational methods for finding the exhibited solutions are left for upcoming lessons. For now, we assume that such maximum score is known. Graph representations of an alignment are very useful, especially if the sequences are long. In general, the closer is the graph to a diagonal, the higher the score of the alignment. Gap insertions lie off diagonals, and therefore, while mismatches fall within the diagonal, they are usually marked with a different color, as the yellow cell in this graph. Global alignment is the most direct way of looking for similarities between two sequences, but it's not always adequate. Some similarities are not clearly exhibited in at least a couple of situations, each of which gives rise to a new problem. A first situation arises in the comparison of sequences of significantly different lengths. Although the differences in length in this example may not be all that dramatic, still we can appreciate the effects of using global alignment to compare them. The shorter sequences get scattered all along the longest one, losing its structure as a sequence and with that the sense of comparison between them. The graph of the optimal alignment has long segments indicating a poor degree of similarity. Here is an alignment of the same sequences in which the structure of the shorter sequence is better reflected. This alignment ignores a large segment of the longest sequence and thus is not a global alignment. The intention here is to keep the structure of the shorter sequence as much as possible. 
In order to keep the structure of the shorter sequence, the alignment is confined to a small box that is just wider than 8, the length of the shorter sequence. Here is a detailed calculation of the score of this alignment. Notice that the score is higher than that of the global alignment for these sequences, as we already pointed out. Since this alignment is confined to a smaller box, it is not a solution to the global alignment problem. Here's a definition of this new kind of alignment. The semi-global alignment problem is an attempt to maintain the integrity of the shorter sequence in an alignment. This definition is highly intuitive as the meaning of aligning y as a sequence within x is not clearly defined. In this case, as in many other cases in bioinformatics, the full meaning of a semi-global alignment is provided by the rules used in algorithms for computing them. These will be discussed in an upcoming module. For now, we distinguish global alignment from semi-global by confining the alignment to a small box the graph of a semi-global alignment solution is always closer to a diagonal than that of a global alignment solution. Unlike a graph of a global alignment, semi-global alignment graphs do not necessarily cross all the columns in the array, but do cross all the rows. Global alignments, or eventually semi-global alignments, tend to hide local similarities as well. These are regions of high similarity between globally dissimilar sequences. For instance, the global alignment between these two sequences does not provide a clear picture about similarities between their segments. In order to capture these similarities, it is necessary to define yet another type of alignment problem. The local alignment problem is the problem of finding a pair of subsequences whose alignment achieves the highest possible score. It is important to remark that unlike semi-global alignments, neither of the subsequences need to be a pattern. This example shows that the sequences previously aligned globally have indeed much similarity that we could detect with the global alignment. It is worth remarking that the sequences that appear in the alignment are indeed subsequences of the input sequences meaning uninterrupted segments in the original sequences. As a consequence of the fact that the alignment is between subsequences, the graph of a local alignment does not necessarily cross all rows and columns of the underlying array. Alignment problems were originally classified in two categories, global alignments and local alignments. A global alignment spans the entire length of a query and subject sequences. A local alignment identifies regions of similarity within long sequences that are overall dissimilar. The semi-global alignment problem, in turn, can be viewed as a variant of global alignment in which one sequence is much shorter than the other. In such cases, aligning the entire length of the longer sequence does not make much sense. However, unlike the local alignment, the semi-global alignment takes the whole shorter sequence, not one of its subsequences.